Hi, I'm Liz Henry. I'm faculty with NAOPT. And if you've ever taken a cervical course with me, you probably learned that one of my favorite nerves in the region is cranial nerve 11, or the spinal accessory nerve. And the spinal input to that nerve actually goes as far distal as cervical 6. So you don't want to think of this nerve just with something involving the head. You want to think about this in your cervical patients. So you can actually get restrictions of neurodynamic mobility. This could be your patient that is constantly complaining of upper trapezius uh, tightness. It's constantly stretching. The result that they get from stretching it is quite short-lived. It could be this nerve and it might be a better um, approach to treat the nerve rather than just constantly stretching um, the trapezius. And if you remember that muscles are completely ruled by nervous system. So if that nerve is under undue tension, the nervous system may be commanding upper trapezius to stay tight to unload that nerve. So let's look at the diagnostics on this. You might think of this if you see a scenario like this where rotation left and right is pretty normal. So John, turn left and then turn right. And his rotation is pretty normal. But now for side bending, go ahead and bend to the left. And that's a little tightness, that's his um, spinal accessory nerve on this side, good, you can come up, but go to the other side. And you can see he really can't go to that side without letting this elevate, come back up. Let's keep it stable and go to the right. And you can see how restricted and how much more bowstringing there is there. So a little differential diagnosis, how would we know that this isn't just restricted joints that's causing this? Well, one thing you can do is go in and unload that nerve, just completely give me the full weight of this arm, let all of this relax, now go to the right, and you can see he goes quite a bit further and come back up. So how would you treat this? Let's take a look. So to do a manual release on this nerve, what I refer to as neurogenic massage, having him lie on his side um, with the side that you're treating up works quite well. Um, it's easily accessible for palpation. And there frequently are anastomoses with some of the supraclavicular nerves. So you can test out this tension um, one way to tension it is to tension it from the bottom up. And if you pull the scapula in a bit of retraction and depression, you can see the nerve bundles here. And to offload, just elevate it. And then at the head, head end, if you bring in a little bit of cranial vertebral flexion, lateral flexion and rotation away, um, that will tension it from the cranial end. And if you do both, you can see some of the bowstringing and you can palpate the bowstringing of those nerve fibers. So to do the, um, just put your hand at your side. To do the neurogenic massage, you can come in and you wanna be really gentle. Sometimes playing with nerves can be like playing with fire. So you wanna be really gentle along that nerve tract. And there are several different possibilities here. If your patient is exquisitely sensitive at this nerve, this would not be a technique to do at this time. But we are going along the length of that nerve and it's quite superficial. And we are stimuli, stimulating the nervi nervorum and the vasa nervorum. Those are the nerves to the nerves and the arteries to the nerve. And if we go right along here and just gently free this up. Following that, you can check in again with your range of motion. Go ahead and side bend to the right. And he's still a little taut there, not as much, and he has a little bit more mobility. So I've drawn in the nerve, and that nerve exits the cranium out of the jugular foramen. It's kind of just in between the mastoid process and this back ramus of the mandible, and it really comes out just medially to the styloid process. Then here's its path. 
then go ahead and do a pure lateral flexion away. And again, here's the, the bow stringing and come back. And if this area is quite sensitive, it might like to be supported with some tape. So you can use a simple taping like this to help unload. And remember, as long as the scapular muscles are looking to protect that nerve, it will also affect your scapular kinesis or dyskinesis. So here's my nerve prop. Nerve is approximately right here. It's always nice to give the patient um, a nerve slider for this so that they can be involved in self-treatment. And this works really well. So I explain to patients how to put slack on the nerve. If he shrugs this left shoulder, there's slack. And if he sides bend uh, ipsilaterally, go ahead and do that, that puts slack on the nerve. If he contralaterally bend, that puts tension and come back. And if on this shoulder he retracts and depresses, that puts tension on the nerve. So if we want to get um, a slider going, there's two ways, cranially and distally. We would have him shrug the shoulder a little bit and then side bend away and come back up. And I tell the patients not to expect to feel a stretch. This is not a stretch. It should be small, easy, gentle movements. And they even about six repetitions is perfect. And then to do the slider distally, he would ipsilaterally side bend first and then retract and depress the scapula and come back. So if you'd like to learn more strategies like this for your cervical patient, join us at NAOPT for one of our cervical courses.